it's quite uncomfortable for older people in that sort of situation, trying to sort of, uh, even, even the way it is just now. So it's only going to make that situation worse. And it doesn't have, you know, it's, it's not, a, not a sustainable kind of situation, I don't think. And she has to do certain amounts yes. of banking because she gets checks that she has to bank still. So, you know, I don't see how you can get around that. I think that's a really important point. Is that what you No, I was saying that, but my concern is that the elderly people, people that don't use the internet, you know, into the system, and there's a lot, there's a lot of elderly people near. It's got a high proportion of, of retired people here that move up to them down south, and they don't use the internet. They're not happy, they want to go to the bank. We've been in the Royal Bank for 30 years, all working life, and then of course it just turned them back on you. Mm -hmm. It's the same with the interest rates you pay anyway, so mm -hmm. it's pathetic. I think that's a view that a lot of people feel very strongly about, actually, is that you know, having supported the banks, and not only in terms of being a customer, but actually, literally, with your taxpayers' money, um, you know, they should be taking this this kind of decision on that. It, it, yes. No, it's, <laughs> I've got a question and a comment. Okay. And the question is part of it because I haven't done very good research myself. You mentioned quite rightly in your comments that technically we, via the government and as taxpayers, own the majority of shares in RBS. Now, all banks are regulated in terms of their financial conduct by the Bank of England and the, and the FCA or whatever it's called now, the Financial Conduct Authority. Given that the government has a stake, a majority stake in, in RBS as, a, as an actual shareholder, what is the channel, what is the mechanism through which the government as the government brings its views and its influence to bear on the policy making of that, not their mm -hmm. financial integrity, but their policy choices. And that's my question. And my reason for raising it is this. Everybody says, the bank itself, and, and uh, your colleague there also made the point, <coughs> that like it or not, the nature of banking is changing. The majority of people are shifting towards digital banking in one form or another, whether it's mobile phones, the internet, or whatever. And RBS has explicitly proposed, as part of the basis of this policy decision, that banking has shifted away from branches and towards the internet and an mm -hmm. IT dependent system. What I find illogical about the policy decisions they made is that if in fact that's the trend and that's the pattern, then the last thing the bank should be doing is cutting its presence in those areas where IT is weak. You could make a case for saying that if in fact IT banking and digital banking is on the rise, then you can afford to prune away your branches in city centres and in those parts of the country where digital services, mobile phone networks and, and internet speeds are optimal. It seems to me perverse to quote digital banking as a reason for, for cutting or reshaping, but then to cut those branches and banks in the places where digital options are very constrained. I mean, I think, although we all sympathise with the fact that, that older and less able people struggle anyway, if I were a banker, I'd say, look, I'm not a social service, I'm a business. Mm -hmm. But in business terms, it seems to me that the policy makers and the government is, mm -hmm. through that channel should be asking obviously some serious questions about their own logic yeah. in cutting the peripheral <coughs> where digital isn't available. If they've got a cut, let them cut back at the centres. Well, I'll ask David to talk about the Federation of Small Businesses proposal about minimum banking standard at the mm -hmm. second, because I think that's a really important part of the answer that, that you, you're looking for there. But there are a couple of other points I'll pick up from your, uh, both your question and from your general statement there, which I think are really important. Uh, one is that, yes, the high street is changing, banking is changing, and we all have to understand that that's a part of the mix. But it doesn't mean that you cut the head off the, you know, to, for, the, you know, for the whole of the body by doing this. And actually when 
uh, having a different view of how the branches interact. And you make a really good point about the fact that actually those branches that are away from the centre are more important. But there's actually a business opportunity for banks in, in, you know, in terms of maintaining their presence, not just um, from a point of view of uh, you know, having a, a, a public relations thing or you know, being able to get the name out there, but actually a literal a commercial advantage for them. Studies have shown that in areas where the branch has closed, uh, new business loans actually cut in half for that area. Um, so it has a, an actual direct effect on people who might go locally to look for business advice in terms of setting a business. So it actually directly affects the local economy. But there are many other things, and one of the things we haven't talked about tonight is how young people access banking from the early days. <coughs> At the moment, if their only access to banking is an app, then that's all they will know. Now, what they won't be able to do is go and get the kind of advice that they might need to give them the financial education to get a good start in life and so forth, which banks could be supplying and gaining customers for life by doing it. But the other question you asked was about policy and about how it's affected within the UK government. It's my view that the UK government should be as major shareholder as any, I mean, if anybody here has a shareholding in anything, if you go along to an AGM, you would expect if you held most of the shares to be held, to be held and have your view held. It's my view that they should be going along and saying, and I'll come on to the minimum banking standard in a second, they should be saying there are things that you should be doing for communities that we want you to do now. Um, unfortunately, the response directly from the Prime Minister and the Treasury Minister, and I've asked myself of the Leader of the House of Commons, has been, it's a commercial decision. So there is no policy intervention at the moment. We are working to try and change that. But perhaps if David could talk about minimum banking standard. Yeah, that's certainly something. Just to put it in context, back in September we surveyed all island-based businesses because the island bill was going through Scottish Parliament, we wanted to know for islands. And it is very typical, I think, of the Highlands Islands as a whole, where people said they loved their island, but 20% of businesses had thought about moving to the mainland where it was easy to do business, 20% across all islands. And then you say, well, what's important to you? And what's important to people there is, really important next 20 years, is retaining more young people, attracting young families in, because they recognise you've got an ageing population and that it's not a healthy situation. Too many young folk leave. And it's the same with the Highlands as a whole, really. Maybe not, I don't know, near so much, but certainly across much of the Highlands. So there's an issue there, and it's important for these guys to be close to a shop, close to a post office, close to the things that everyone expects from life, a school, things you've got kids. Now, when banks close, it has big implications, because it's one more thing that makes it difficult to do business. The Royal Banks now say, for example, the Tongue Branch is going to be kept open for another, for another 10 months. If that wasn't kept open, if you're in Durness doing business there, your nearest bank is now in three quarters to drive away. You know, it's the nearest bank. It's a long, long way. If you're in Barra, it's a very long ferry trip. So these things really matter. Now, what we've said is banks are almost like utilities. That, yes, it's hard for their commercial businesses, but they are and they aren't. Their presence is really important. So government, urgently, UK government, should say, right, we'll put a moratorium on. <coughs> the last bank in town closed, and the new banks can close, the last bank in town. And then they should commission a study with Scottish government as well to look at the economic impact um, of banks and closing them. Because we can all say it's terrible for old people, it's terrible for businesses, we've got evidence to say it, we produce reports, we hand them in, they gather dust and they're eventually burnt. If the proper if the governments jointly do an economic impact study that says, look, across the UK as a whole and the regions within it, there's a real issue here. There really is damage. There's damage to people's lives, there's damage to the ability to attract young people, you know, you get an aging population and so on, then that is a much more powerful argument. So we think two things. A, there should be a minimum standard established that should, the last bank in, in strategically should not be allowed to close unless there's a very good reason for it. And secondly, that we need an economic impact study to back all this up. Because our reports and everybody's reports are all fine in themselves, but if there's a government report, it can be carried out. <coughs> As a, you know, as a small business, um, the, I've got two, two things that concern me. First of all, um, my, when I was informed that the bank would be closing, the relationship <coughs> manager phoned me and he said that I would have to pay into the post office. Mm -hmm. So the actual cash you pay into the post <coughs> office isn't going to be in your account until 
a few days later. So cash flow. And a small business cash flow is very important. And the second thing is that if I want my money to go into the bank that day, I've got to take it to Inverness, so it's costing me money, and also the security. So I've then got to go and park somewhere and walk with cash into the bank because there's no, uh, uh, there is some par um, parking at the one down at, um, uh huh, yeah, along and a half. So, you know, the two sort of practical. But, but not only that, if you've got to go to a, a mobile bank, You've got to go to the time it's there. You've got to, if you're a one man, man or woman band, you've got to close your property to do it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There's a security issue. Uh -huh. I had a chat to a senior policeman in the Highlands the other day who never thought about it being a senior policeman. <laughs> <serious, laughs> uh -huh. There is a, you know, you predict people are going to be queuing up with bags of cash. Uh -huh. um, and the other thing is, is why every time you go into the bank, you've got to wait in a queue. Nobody's <laughs> using banking. Why yeah. do you always I've have to say, wait in a queue? I've got to say, for these banks that have no customers in them, and, you know, nobody's using them. Nick and I went into the Royal Bank before we came here tonight just to, to say, look, we're holding this tonight, just wanted to let you know. And we had to wait in a queue <laughs> to, get, to get seen. And, and every branch I've visited, I've had to wait in the queue, and yet they tell you there's the, 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 10 the people here. 47 regular customers per week. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's twice a week, and I'm always seeing that. Yeah. yeah. But we wanted, you know, if your sort code is near, maybe it's only if your sort code is up to the camera. Well, if somebody with an Inverness account wouldn't count. Because what about tourists? I mean, yeah. lots of tourists go through banks. And... The, the other thing is, um, I appreciate that digital banking is the way forward, and but I also appreciate for older people, um, they'll never do that. A lot of older people won't. Um, but why not then just say, right, we'll reduce the days or we'll reduce the hours rather than just take it away altogether. Even if they did two days a week or open two days a week or five mornings or something like that, you know, maybe a compromise. Can I just say, what Bank of Scotland did, they, they called um, access to banking protocol, so they're meant to go through certain checks before they close a branch, which means looking at visitor numbers, looking at the age profile, there's all sorts of things they've got to do, and they publish these documents. And in Sutherland, what they did was they closed the banks from five to three days hmm. or less, and they said, look, over the last 12 months, numbers have dropped. But they closed it from five to three days. Exactly. But it's, you know, so is that, you've got to be very careful with these statistics they produce. I think the other thing to think about from the point of view of the future of banking is that people, you know, they've sold this idea that the future of banking is all digital. And actually, that's not the way the world works. Because many years ago, they said the introduction of TV was going to kill off the cinema. Uh, but they, before that, they'd said that the introduction of cinema would kill off the radio. And yet all these different platforms for communicating with you still exist. Before that, the ra radio was going to kill off the newspapers and all the rest of it. And yet for all that time, people have accessed those services in the way they want to access those services. And sometimes they've been up in popularity and sometimes they've been down in popularity. But the, these different platforms exist and I believe it will be the same for banking. And you know some of these decisions will be, uh, you know, are being taken if they aren't reversed just now. People will regret in business, and, and not only in business and the users, but the actual banks will regret the decision they made in the future as well. Because I think the point about the outreach into the community and that ability to go into the communities is very important. Yes. And just to pick up a point about that, I mean, banks have a number of functions, and, mm -hmm. and it's interesting that Ray just in this discussion. We've identified three different kind of areas of concern or activity. One is quite rightly the elderly and the less able, the people who have a problem with retail banking. And obviously, the shift to digital is impinging on what might be called that face to face retail banking. Secondly, you touched on the point about young people learning what a bank is and what a bank does. A third point, which is very relevant to small businesses and indeed all businesses, but also very relevant to banks, is that all banks now, burned by their experiences of the crash, burned by the problems of poor judgment over things like subprime and so on, an area where the banks have been and arguably still are vulnerable is in terms of knowing your customer. The centralization, the corporatization of banking mean, means that an awful lot of banking, right up to and through, well, since the crash, 
has been on algorithms. And one of the points about that, and it's why there's this massive apparatus of money laundering reg regulation and form things, is because banks have got to the point where they didn't really know their customers. I don't mean their retail customers who were depositing back with cash. The people to whom they were lending money, the businesses that they were helping to keep going. And there is, it seems to me, almost a political argument to say that banks should be ensuring that they have sufficient outreach, to use your term, that their managers know firsthand, not just the people who are saving them, which is fine and easy and good, but also the people to whom they're lending money for mortgages, the people, the businesses to whom they're advancing money or giving, uh, you know, revolving loans to. It seems to me crucial to make the point that for the integrity of the banking system, banks need to have people out on the ground, in the field. And that means particularly for small businesses in localities like all these places we've been talking about. So that the bank managers on the ground know who they are dealing with. It seems to me this is a, if you like,